You are now listening to On One Radio, the talk show podcast station, bringing you the realest entertainment information, music, lifestyle, and truth and comedy shows around. This is Let's Talk. or blessings. I don't dine with snakes or bite my tongue. It is what it is. I am what I am. And I am your host, Tony Williams. And welcome to everyone who is listening. Shout out to my new listeners and all of my own ones, day ones. Big shout out to the Facebook group over, private group over on Facebook. Much love and respect goes out to you all. And thanks for being my ride or die. Um, Thank you to all the new listeners, of course. Um, If you don't know already, I am Tony Williams, and you are listening to On One Radio. Welcome. Um, If you don't know about the YouTube channel, go over on YouTube and check that out. The name over there is Tony On One. And always remember to like, share, and subscribe. And also, while you're at it, Check out some of my fam- my family on there. Um, Low baby, uh, check out her channel. She's uh, into music and everything, and she is good. And we want to support her and see her go even farther. Um, we have SP News Nuggets over there with all of those wonderful news nuggets that she brings. Um, we have Kevin Hart. We have Amp Easy. Um, we have School Bus Driver Loves Kids, just so many more. And also, we have Richard Ogbu over there on YouTube. So, go over there and show them some love. Tell them Tony sent you. And much love and respect, yes. Um, and do not forget to go on all the social media sites. Like, share, and follow over at Tumblr, Facebook, Snapchat, WordPress, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, YouTube. All right. I hope everyone has been having a great day and we're having pretty much of a relaxed evening. Now, let's get into a little bit of business here. Um, This podcast contains some quotations, images, and excerpts from copyrighted material. These uses fall well within the copyright doctrine of fair use. Fair use refers to the right to reproduce, use, and share. All right, let's get into it. Now, tonight's topic, and I'm all for um, health and everything and living a healthier lifestyle and, you know, just being well. And in the spirit of that, I know a lot of people are trying to get healthier, and that's great. Um, But I want you guys to be informed about what it is you're putting into your temple. That is your body. Um, So the topic is fake. Is fake meat better for you or the environment? And I mean, that's a very good, good topic in question because there's a lot of things that we question, but half the time we do not question about the food that we're eating and putting into our bodies. And so I really want you guys to be aware of that. Now, based on calories alone, plant-based protein is healthier than animal-based meat. But, and we Mm -hmm. all know there's always a but when it comes to the foods and what we've got going on and everything. And, but there's more to the story when it comes to our food. Now, fake meat has found its way into mainstream food chains. But is the hype to be believed? Or isn't it? And, I mean, I'm pretty sure those who go by uh, Burger King, you've seen that Impossible Burger and all of that. They say it's supposed to be vegan and 
all this good old shit, but is it? And if it actually is made out of plants, is it just plants or is it chemicals? And these are the things that we really need to know because later on down the road, these can cause problems that, well, can do us more, more harm than good. So, like Burger King, McDonald has joined other fast food giants to launch its own plant-based burger. Yes. Cory Booker fielded a question about his vegan lifestyle during the recent Democratic presidential debate. And Impossible Foods plans to launch fishless fish alongside its meatless burgers in the near future. So-called fake meat or or alternative meat products is rising in popularity as consumers look to eat more sustainable a more sustainable diet but are the plant-based burgers really better for the environment and how do they compare to meat in terms of calories and health benefits so the question comes to mind what is fake meat I mean like seriously it's like okay you want me to eat this but you calling it fake meat, and I'm just trying to understand, well, why do I want to eat fake meat? Why Wouldn't it be healthier for me to eat the actual real meat? Well, let's dive into it and see what comes up. Well, apparently there's no industry-wide term for these products. Traditional meat companies argue that the word meat should apply only to animal-raised protein. Okay, I can understand that. But in general, alternative meat products fall into two categories. Plant-based protein and cell-based protein. Yes, I did say cell-based. In plant-based products, protein is extracted and isolated from the plant. Then combined with other plant-based ingredients, with the goal of making the product as meaty as possible. Popular examples of plant-based meat include the Impossible Burger, the Beyond Burger, and the myriad of options now commonly found in the freezer section of the grocery store. In cell-based meat, an animal cell is extracted from an animal and grown in a lab culture to create a piece of meat. I know, I know, I know. Trust me, I fucking know. It was kind of eerie the first time I read through that. Well, in the six weeks it takes to grow a chicken for slaughter, the cell culture-based process produces the same amount of meat, minus the bones, feathers, and etc. Which is even more fucking eerier to me. I'm not so sure about that. But I digress. Just Meat and Memphis Meats are two popular examples of companies growing cell-based meat, such as cell-based products, however, have not yet been released into the mass market. Is it healthier than actual meat? Based on calories alone, plant-based protein is healthier than animal-based meat. The Impossible Whopper from Burger King is lower in calories, fat, and cholesterol than the regular Whopper. Cell-based meat also has the potential to be healthier than regular animal meat because it can be engineered to contain more protein, essential amino acids and vitamins, while reducing the amount of saturated fat and minimizing the chance of animal-borne illnesses such as salmonella and E. coli, contaminating the meat. The number one question dietitians ask and get asked is about the healthiness of these meat alternatives. And I can imagine that question because I have a lot of questions myself. Now, a dietitian by the name of Samantha Cassetti receives is about the healthiness of these meat alternatives. Now she responded by saying people are really curious about them. 
they understand there is an environmental impact to red meat but more importantly i think that people are willing to make trades if they think that is a healthier product she agrees that the products are sustainable and easy swap in for meat from animals but prefers that her clients opt for whole foods over highly processed plant-based and cell-based alternatives these are manufactured foods and some of the ingredients are better than others cassidy said it might look like me and act like me but we just don't really know what's going to happen there now the impossible whopper is lower in calorie content but it contains significantly more sodium than the regular whopper as well as a myriad of other highly processed ingredients like modified food starch cultured dextrose and soy protein isolate but this doesn't mean that regular animal proteins are the healthier option. Now, industrial animal meat is treated with chemicals and it tends to be contaminated with bacteria. I mean, slaughterhouses, they're just ranked with meat contamination, said Bruce Frederick, the co-founder and executive director of Good Food Institute which is a non-profit think tank for cultured meat and plant-based meat. Frederick's main issue with the meat industry is the overuse of antibiotics, which he said has in turn made millions of people antibiotic resistant. Last year, the UN declared antimicrobial resistance to be a global health emergency that threatens the human population perhaps nearly as much as global warming. So are meats, meat alternatives better for the environment? And the answer was no, because they can maybe help. The Beyond Meat Burger uses 99% less water, 93% less land, and 90% less fossil fuel emissions. The Impossible Burger uses 87% less water, 96% less land, and 89% less fossil fuel emissions than a quarter pound of regular ground beef. Now, the statistics offer a rosy image of meat alternatives benefiting the environment in a big way. But the pressure on the planet would be impacted in a huge and positive way. If everyone replaced meat with plant or cell-based alternatives, Frederick said, with the global population expected to swell to 9.7 billion by 2050, meat alternatives could be effective in creating a more sustainable food supply without forcing people to change their diet too drastically. But it's not the magic bullet. Marco Springman a senior researcher with the Oxford Martin Program on the Future of Food, published a paper last year in the journal Nature describing how the global diet needs to change to preserve the environment. He's skeptical of how effective these factory-produced meat alternatives will be in changing the food system. Those companies make wild claims but they don't back that up with any independent attestment, Springman said. Their claims are based on third-party potential estimates of emissions. Even if meat alternative companies back their products up with more studies, they don't offer the best emission solution. Cellular-based meat alternatives release five times the emissions as chicken putting their emissions just under beef. Plant-based meat alternatives produce the same amount of emissions as chicken, which are about five times the emissions of legumes and vegetables. And that's, I mean, just listening to it's very interesting. Now, Springman recommends a flexitarian diet, heavy on vegetables and legumes with a heavily re reduced portion of meat. 
This amount of meat would equal one 100 gram burger or 3.5 ounce per week or choosing to consume chicken or fish just twice a week. This heavy reduction in meat consumption pre presents a steep learning curve for much of the global population, but it's not infeasible. It's about perspective and spices, Springman said. Is fake meat economically feasible? Alternative meat products are still more expensive than regular meat products. At Whole Foods, the Beyond Burger retails for around $12 a pound, while regular ground beef goes for less than half that at $5. And a Bear Burger in New York, the possible, the impossible and Beyond Meat swaps, swap ins cost $2.95 more than the regular beef burger. Which I can, I can believe that I can understand that. And that's one reason why, in my own opinion, speaking for myself, I'm not changing. I'm, I'm sticking to my real meat. Now, everyone has their own choice to, you know, choose to eat what they choose to eat. That's why we have free will. But I'm only here to put the information out here for you guys so you can make informed decisions. And you can actually go back and research this yourself and you know, comes to terms or grips with what it is you want to choose to do. Now, the high demand and small market makes alternative meat products available for a small sector of the world, upper middle class and eco-conscious consumers. But Frederick has faith that the better product will even out in the end against animal sourced meat. Once the infrastructure has been created and once the volume goes up, these products will be less expensive than their animal counterparts, Frederick said. But even the most efficient process for creating hyper-processed meat alternatives is unmatched to the efficiency of growing vegetables and legumes. Conventional wisdom holds Vegetables remain the cheapest and most sustainable option. Which I can get I can get with that, but there's a lot of people who live in city areas who do not have room or space or even time to grow them. That is mostly why I like living on the countryside. Because you can grow your own. You can you can raise your own Foods. That way you know what's going into your foods. You know what's being put on your foods. And it's a matter of going back to the basics, to be honest about it. Because if we go back to the basics, we can weed out so much of the nonsense that goes into our foods. Of what's sprayed on it, what's fed to the animals, what's, what's put in the soil. Um, pesticides and everything else it's a matter of if you're going to go natural don't cut corners and go completely natural if you're going to do that do it yourself like I said have your own gardens raise your own animals that way you know for a fact what's in it instead of a mass market, mass produce, producing of these foods, then you're taking yourself and your family out of that equation of becoming sick or getting so many antibiotics that may cause you to become antibiotic resistant. It's just a matter of actually taking the time and putting in the work to do so. Now, I know a lot of people listening to this are going to be like, girl, you are out of your fucking mind. I work all the time. I have no time for this. Well, I'll tell you what. It's either that or don't complain later. And I say that out of love because at some point we have to take ownership of 
what we do, what we say, and everything else. And that even includes your health. You have to take ownership of it. Because there's there's not always going to be someone there for you to blame. Like I said, we have free will and we have the choice to make our own decisions. I just hope and pray that everyone makes a good decision when it comes to their health. And I support a healthy living and lifestyle. So this information is just basically here for you to be informed and aware. So you can make better decisions for yourself and for your family and generations to come. Because to be honest about it, there is no youth serum out there. There's no special fountain where you can go dip your toes and your head and stay young forever. No. The key to being healthy is the effort you put into being healthy. Work and effort, you live longer and healthier. Growing your own foods, raising your own animals, that's exercise. It's time spent outdoors in fresh air, getting plenty of sun, feeling breezes. It's, you can bond. It can be used as bonding time. It can be used as teaching your children time. There's so much you can do with that. That makes your life mental, physical, and emotionally healthier. So just take the time and do your research. And I'm going to tell you, growing your own food is a task. But the reward is so much better. Because you have the confidence in the end to know that You and your family has done this and done this together. You know what's in your food and what's not in your food. So you can take pride in that. And I wish for everyone to be healthy, happy, and live longer. Without chemicals and extra antibiotics that you don't need. And that's why the children are changing so much. Girls are coming out way too plump before it's time for them to be plump. I mean, I can go down a whole list. (laughs) But I won't. I, I won't drag you guys along that road. But I'll say this. Be happy and be healthy. And do some homework. Do some research on these foods. Learn as much as you can about them before you put them in your body, before you introduce your family to them. Weigh the options before just doing. That way you can live much longer. And you don't need a youth serum. (laughs) So, it has been great talking to you guys and giving you this information Um, I hope you guys have a great night um, and have a very wonderful day tomorrow. A very productive and happy and healthy day tomorrow. And be good. Love each other and always stay beautiful and stay blessed. You have been listening to On One Radio. The talk show podcast station. Bringing you the realest entertainment information, music, lifestyle, and truth and comedy shows around. I have been your host, Tony Williams. Big shout out to everyone. Love each other. Be fair. Be right. And be safe out there. Don't forget to like, share, and follow. And subscribe for Raw Uncut Truth. That is On One Radio. This has been Let's Talk. Until next time, be blessed.